Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. think about what Eddie Hall's going to go for. I want you to channel your energy. I just heard someone say that you ain't going to do it, Eddie. Are you going to do it? Come on, Eddie. The power is within the beast. Bring it out. Right. This is it. This is for all the money. One thousand. 26 pounds for the win. This is the ultimate test for a strong man. It is the zenith, the peak. There's no greater accolade than being chosen to be one of the 10 who compete here. Ladies and gentlemen, he comes from Stoke-on-Trent in England, stands six foot two tall, 400 pounds. He is a multiple British champion and Britain's strongest man. Welcome out, Eddie the Beast Paul! People perceive strongmen as big fat bastards that drink beer and lift heavy weights. They're so far from it. It's not just going to the gym, it's getting up at six o'clock in the morning to force feed. It's going to the gym at seven o'clock in the morning to train. It's coming back and force feeding again. And then you're force feeding for dinner, force feeding for your second dinner. And then you go training again, doing weights. And then you've got to come back and force feed again. There's so many factors to it. It is a complete life obsession. It. It's a new British record. You can put it down now, Eddie. Eddie? Eddie Hall, British record at 435, and he's still holding it. How does that feel? Feels amazing. It's all about work. If you work the hardest at it, you will be number one. This next man, the winner here last year. You can be very proud of this American from Colorado. Six foot eight, weight unknown. Brian Shaw! I thrive off of competing. I have to compete in something, I have to. I don't know how anybody could live their life without being competitive. I feel like right now I'm getting into the prime of my career. I'm the number one strong man in the world. Brian has tasted it. You know, all of the rewards and stuff are great, but with Brian, Brian wants to prove to the other guys that he's better than them. Brian Shaw's primary rival uh, for the title of the strongest man in the world is Zadrunas. Zadrunas? He's Michael Jordan. I'm pretty sure I can say this confidently, but there's, there's never been two competitors that have gone back and forth like him and I ever. And here he is. He needs two rooms for all of his trophies. My most important titles is seven times Arnold Classic Champion, four times World's Strongest Man, two times IFSA World's Strongest Man, four times Europe's Strongest Man, 14 times Lithuanian Strongest Man, and more than 70 world records in different strongman events. Arguably the strongest man in history. He's known by one letter, Z. Ladies and gentlemen, Zadunas Zaviskas. I think that age is going to catch Zadrunas a little bit this year. 40 years old. I watched him walk around the other day and gave him the thumbs up. You feel good? And he was like, uh, and that's that old man thing. You know, it's like, uh, you get up, you make sounds when you go, ah, ah, ah. Zadrunas is getting there. Following up behind, he's just about the biggest man on the planet. 
He is a star in Game of Thrones on television. Six foot nine, 420 pounds. He comes from the land of ice, the mountain of Thor Julius Bjornsson. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to become the best. I'm eating my six, eight meals a day. It's crazy, you know, I have to force my food down. Half Thor, he's tired of being looked at as just a TV guy. If eating shit would make me stronger, I'd probably do it. Put your hands together for all of the athletes in today's competition. In the history of the world, there have been strong men. And it didn't matter how civilized we became, we always admired power. Another 10 pounds in there. Yeah, at least. I'm telling you. <laughs> Look how pumped up you are. Thank you, very right nice. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear Eddie Hall. Yes! In the old days, like 100 years ago, they did a lot of the lifting in the beer halls. Why? Because you didn't have to ask for spectators to come. You had hundreds of people drinking beer, eating chicken, eating meat, and whatever else they were doing. And there they were doing the lifting. The, the beer hall would give them a little area and they said, you guys live there. Our people enjoy watching you and enjoy this powerful, monstrous guys. And they enjoy being watched because at the end, we always do everything for showing off, right? And so out of that evolved then the much more organized Olympic lifting. I wanted to have it be part of the Arnold Classic to promote it because I grew up with those pictures in the beer halls. To me, to celebrate strongman is a natural thing to do. Probably every man's alpha male dream to become the world's strongest man. And if you don't want that title, you're lying to yourself in some deep way. I think mean, everyone would love to have a title like that. It's the ultimate title. You know, you've got the fastest man on the world, the fattest man on the world, but in my opinion, the strongest man in the world is the ultimate title. My journey began when I was five years old and my mum joined me into the local swimming club and that's when I began training. When I was 12 years old, I was a national champion swimmer. I was the best in the country, smashing British records. That's where I came into my own, really. That's where my frame sort of built up. I grew up in a niche little town called Stoke-on-Trent. It's a pretty rough place. Probably in terms of, you know, the unemployment and, and crime and drugs, Stoke-on-Trent's right up there. You know, it's one of the worst places to live. I'm not proud of it, but I was expelled from high school and I, I went into employment very early. You know, at 16, I was full-time employed. I did an apprenticeship with it, like being a truck mechanic. I did that until I was 27, you know, so I've done a good 10, 11 years of working 55, 60 hours a week and then training for 20 hours a week. So, you know, I was really burning the candle at both ends. When I first met him, he wasn't competing on the level he is. He wasn't really winning. He wasn't the size he was. He wasn't... He didn't have his head down and thinking about strongman every day. It was something he was doing on the side. I think growing up in Stoke-on-Trent has, uh, has given me some sort of, of drive to sort of separate myself. You know, I don't want to be the average guy from Stoke, you know, who's just worked nine to five and dies at 60, 70 years old. When I first started out Strongman 10 years ago, I had no idea where I'd be, you know, right now. I'll tell you what did it for me is I pulled a world record deadlift. That was the turning point for me. So it was that weekend that I quit my job, never went back to work, and I became a pro strongman. That's when I started to believe. I'm living the dream. I've got I work for myself now. Really, I'm living the dream. They get upset when hitting back, though. 
Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> he could be very scary to some people, but I'm lucky enough to know him. We love each other. So I know how to deal with Eddie. If, if I want my way, I'll get my way. I just, I just take away his food. I'll probably have a pizza as a starter, probably a steak and chips or a steak and potato for a main and a pudding. Um, that'll, probably, that'll do me until I have a second dinner in a couple of hours. We probably do spend around $1,000 on food a week. It's just continuous, you know, like a cow. You just graze all day, every day. From the second you wake up to the second you go to sleep, there's always something in my hand. If you haven't got your food right, you might, you, strong man's not for you. If you can't eat, don't bother. It's been a, a running joke in the family that I've always been the same age as I am weight. In England, we measure weight in stones. And a stone, to, in English terms, is around 14, 15 pounds. When I was age five, I was five stone. When I was 10, I was 10 stone. When I was 20, 20 stone. And I'm 28 now, I've just hit 28 stone, which is just shy of 400 pounds in body weight. So in terms of, you know, have I always been a big guy? Yeah, you know, from, from a kid, I've been big. <laughs> everything's changed, absolutely everything. From going to a walk, from getting up in the morning to putting my socks on, you know, even to having sex, you know, that's... Eddie. It's, <laughs> I'm that big now, I actually can't even fit her legs around me. Eddie. You know, it's... But, you know, we do it our own way, don't we? We, <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, you know, life's, life definitely changed, you know, and it's for the better. If you could be the best bodybuilder in the world, that's someone's opinion. Someone says you look good, I think you're number one. That's bullshit. But a strong man, you have to prove it. You have to lift weights for reps to prove you are the strongest. And when you do that, no one can say, you're not stronger than him. Yes, I am, because I did seven reps and he did six. This sport is about proving yourself. That's it, it's pure. There's no bullshit. There's no one to say, well, I don't think you're the strongest man in the world. Well, I don't give a fuck what you think. And for us to, to be the, the number one, you know, the strongest man in the world, it's just, it's complete madness. So that means cooking all his meals, it means washing his clothes. And I know that's things that wives often will do, but in the kind of volume you're doing it, his clothes are like bed sheets. His meals are like picnics for 20. And <laughs> he, he can't even put his own socks on, so it's little things that you wouldn't Oh, I'm gonna say I can. Just you can. It looks like. Have you ever seen a ladybird fall when it's back? <laughs> and it's, do you want sausages, babe? Mm. I'm probably gonna have four. Max will have two. Two. Having that kind of weight is its own asset. You want a lot of weight to move a lot of weight, but there's only so much muscle that bone can support. So at some point, if you're going to be putting on more of that weight, some of it has to be fat. Right? So at some point, to get good enough at certain strength activities, it's a necessity that you start putting on fat. In order to be the world's strongest man, you cannot have abs. You have got to have a keg. Do you want some or not? Do Shall I have my sausages back? Yeah. You're probably one of the most sensible ones, aren't you? And you know that once you have done what you want to do once, you're going to stop. So I'm not worried. I could be if it was a different story, if he wanted to do this until he was 60 and mm -hmm. if he was getting bigger the stupid way by eating crappy foods and, and... But you're not, are you? Eddie has... Uh, he's packed his weight on more quickly. That makes me worry. I think the more quickly you gain weight, the more difficult it is for your body to accommodate itself to the extra weight. So this is the exact same thing that we Can did before. Oh yeah, we're gonna take your shirt off because after you're done resting here, 
she'll put the EKG on you. Okay. He, he doesn't always want to be this big. He doesn't want to weigh this much. He knows that he's in danger. It's a risk to him. He doesn't think he could live for 10 years if he stayed this heavy and kept lifting the way he's lifting. I think he may be right. And the fact that he's aware of it and he'll say it, that's important to me. But what else, I wondered, could we do that might give some edge to the men in terms of understanding their health better I contacted a friend of mine, professor at Ohio State, Bill Kramer, and he got together a group of people there. We talked it over. He said, you know, you could do a series of tests and determine how all their bodily functions are working. This is something we're simply offering to you if you'd like to know a lot more about your body than you know now. <laughs> Obviously, being on the path that I've chosen, I've got to be 400 plus pounds in body weight. You know, there's, there's guys out there like Thor and Brian and Sojunas that are a sort of a natural six foot eight, six foot nine, 400 pounds in body weight. So I've got to be, in order, in able to beat those guys, I've got to be those guys. But that being said, I'm putting a little bit extra strain on, on my body and Let's face it, you know, I'm 400 pounds in body weight. I'm not going to walk around for another 10 years at 400 pounds. It's plain and simple, I'm going to die. He knows he's not going to do this forever. He has a plan. I need to walk away a champion, and I'll be, I'll be more than happy with that as long as I win it once. And I, de I definitely won't completely quit the sport. I'll definitely keep involved. I will still train, for sure. You know, I still want to keep my body in good nick. Um, in all honesty, I'd probably take up another sport, you know, whether it be fighting, bodybuilding. No, no. No and no. No. It'll upset me talking about it. What are you getting upset about me being around? Because you. Why? Because you won't. I will. You just said yourself. I've just said I'll spend... I'll... Start taking up something else. Yeah, but I've got much more time at home. No. Yes. You wouldn't. I know what you like. You wouldn't. I would. No, you wouldn't now. And you're not do you're not boxing. There's no chance, Eddie. You're not boxing or bodybuilding. That's not happening. Okay. I, I don't know. Don't no, just be just be normal. I'll, I'll just do mixed martial arts. No, no. About tiddlywinks. Yes, you can play tiddlywinks. I can be a tiddly world tiddlywink champion. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just do something normal. Okay. Eddie always has to be the best at everything. And I think he's very lucky to have that mentality. <laughs> Growing up around here in, uh, with, with my family, I've got two older brothers. I think it's just human nature to want to be better than your siblings. I was uh, obsessed with that. And I think that's something that's like a void that's, that's I've, had a, I've got a hole deep inside me that I'm trying to fill. You know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm way, way surpassed. My brother's in strength, obviously. Um, but now it's, I see those, you know, the Brian Shaws and the Fours have, re have replaced my brothers and I want to beat them. And I'm just trying to fill that void, you know, and I won't feel satisfied until I do. And this is what the obsession is, is I, I, I will literally die trying to win the world's strongest man to prove that, to prove that status. And, I'll do anything. In this day and age, with seven billion people on the planet and a huge proportion of people participating in sports, you need more nature and nurture than ever before, right? There's a greater sifting to find the most talented people who then have to put in the most commitment to separate themselves from the other most talented people. So we're drilling down to these incredible combinations of uh, nature and nurture, and every single one of these these guys represents a lottery win of nature and of nurture. My name is Half Thor, very Icelandic name. Half means ocean, Thor means god, so uh, I'm an ocean god. People really don't know that, but 
I am Ocean God. When you think of a country like Iceland, and you think about what's been passed down in their psyche that they identify with, Vikings, right? These strong, brave, like I think the word berserk comes from the Viking tradition, has the meaning of going into battle with your shirt off. It was never planned to go into summer and become who I am today. It was just my destiny. Back in 2009, when I started to compete in strongman, in my first competition, I broke an Icelandic record. That day, when I broke the record, I definitely realized that I was naturally strong. You know, I can keep on going even though it doesn't feel comfortable or good. I have that. <laughs> Any young person who's aiming to be a strength athlete in Iceland feels like part of a pipeline that is larger than their self. And if you ask them what they're doing and why they're doing it and why they're interested in it, there's no way it's going to start and stop with, oh, this was just something that I got into. So much of what goes into a country producing the tradition of greatness is like storytelling in that culture. There's no reason to be alive if you can't do deadlifts. Uh, Jon Pot Seymourson was competing in Huntley Castle. There's a competition called Strongest Man Alive. And Jon Pot won the deadlift event and shouted out this sentence. There's no reason to be alive if you can't do deadlifts. 1,005 pounds. If you can't do that, then... Ever the showman. He really is incredible. You've seen that tattoo on Hafthor and our friend Andre. They actually got it first. We decided to get a kind of like a friendship tattoo kind of thingy. Every time I deadlift, you know, I see the tattoo, I remember him, and you know, it gives me power. When it's my time to eat, every man grab a plate. Ain't gonna run these streets, ain't gonna watch your way. Die for my family, only the real relay. Ride on my enemies, only them fakers hate God. They blew like that, they blew like that. They blew like that, they blew like that. They blew like that. Like that. Like that. Strong men come in all shapes and sizes. And this is why today you will see a lot of the strong men, like the mountain. He doesn't look so much like an overweight guy, a massive guy. He looks to me like a bodybuilder that is off season, but he's just twice as big. Normal chest measures around 40 inches, 44 maybe. A bit big. Yeah, it's about 62 or 3. He looks enormous. His arms are like this, his neck is like this, his straps are down like this, his deltoids are popping out, his pectorals, and he has a very small waist. And you say to yourself, wait a minute, where did this guy come from? Well, this is the new kind of a look. You don't have to be necessarily overweight per se. But some guys are because they come from the Olympic lifting background, from the powerlifting background. So they know by putting that lifting belt on, it gives them kind of a security around the waist and all that stuff. But it's not necessary. But it's great to see those monsters. 22 inches, regular neck is 15, 16. It's probably the biggest neck I've seen in my life. He, th he thinks he's pretty. I took him shopping and he was like, Mark, how does this make me look? And I'm like, oh, you look like a 6'9", 420 pound fat guy now. <laughs> I'm not fat, I still have abs. I'm like, easy brother with the abs. Get rid of the abs. Yeah. It's good, how does it feel? Feels nice, you know. I feel like I wanna dance. May I? <laughs> People are getting to know Iceland a bit more now, these days. Maybe a few years back, people thought about Iceland as this cold ice place that's just ice everywhere. And Greenland as this green and beautiful. Well, it's actually the opposite. 
Iceland is more green, obviously in the summertime, but we have also win winter here. And here in Iceland, when the winter is, it's, it's get pretty harsh, you know, it's windy, it's a lot of snow, it gets cold, a lot of darkness. I love it. It's not for everybody. In Game of Thrones, they say winter is coming. I know this is hard for you, but winter is coming. We know what's coming with it. We Icelanders know how, how it feels to know that the winter is coming and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. At first, I got a phone call from the Game of Thrones crew here in Iceland because they want to know if I was really as strong as people was, was telling them. So they said, can you pick this guy up? Yeah, just, you know, it was just a regular guy. Yeah, I can pick him up. Okay, please do so. I took him, I picked him up so easily. They were so surprised, you know, whoa, this can look good on TV. I remember the day I started to film the fight, I thought to myself, why am I not more nervous? Because all these people are, all these cameras, and this is the first big thing I'm doing in my life, really. When I came to this guy who was holding my sword, when I saw him, how nervous he was, just be <laughs> giving me my sword, that was his only job. And I realized, oh my God, I should be more nervous. <laughs> he was like shaking. I was like, fuck, why am I? I'm not more nervous. <laughs> my fans around the world write me letters and ask me to sign them autographs. So I always come here and meet up with my dad. We go over it, we read it together. And then he sent it for me because my Busy schedule. Dear Mr. Pearson, I'm 22 years old and I, and I live in Poland. I'm a student of university and my passion are films and sports. I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones and your character in this series was amazing. Can you sign my photos with dedications and send it back to me? I can't wait for your reply. And then he says, sorry for my bad English, but I'm still learning. I'm also, also learning, so it's okay. Great. So I'm gonna sign this and send it back, back to him. I always wake up early in the morning and I always wake up super fresh. Then I eat, eat, and yes, I eat some more. And now I want to show you my new product. This is my vodka. Look, it's me. Everybody loves the Icelandic mountain vodka. What did you say? I love the vodka, I love the vodka. Everybody. I look at Half Thor as having a lot to prove. He wants to win because it will solidify him as being what he really wants to be. And that's the strongest man in the world. He's not satisfied. And that's what strong men are. We have a passion like nobody in any other sport. Strong man is not gonna make myself a good living the rest of my life, for sure. I can easily get very badly injured. You know, I have a daughter, I have a family. My life is busy. I like my life that way. You know, if I'm gonna fail and fail and fail, I'll probably compete 20 more years till if I would reach the goal, you know. I'm not gonna stop. I am gonna be the world's strongest man someday, and I promise you that.
I grew up in a small town, it was Fort Lupton, Colorado, and we had about four to 5,000 people in my hometown growing up. The town has grown a lot since I was here, but there wasn't a lot of students. I mean, you pretty much, for the most part, you knew almost everybody in the school. What's up, man? How's it going? You doing good? You're right, Sean, right? Yeah. This is the yeah. first time I'm meeting you, man. Damn. <laughs> doing good, man? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. you're that big. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, Are you, you go to school here? Yeah, this is like, I don't know, but this is a good moment. Like, wow. <laughs> well, thank you. When you look at a world's strongest man, he looks and carries around his success. A soccer player has to go and do like boom, 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 and kick and kick and boom and do the knees and the whole thing. Then he can show off that he's good. But the power lift, you don't have to. I mean, he's there, he's his mouth, the people looking up, he shakes your hand, he's there. I've always been a big kid. My whole life I've been big. I've been bigger than a lot of my friends and probably middle school, you know, somewhere in there, I started to really realize I'm a lot bigger than my classmates. Sometimes I'm definitely reminded of his size or his strength. I was planting flower pots and we were just kind of discussing, well, what are we gonna do at the end of the season to put them away? Like, am I gonna have to dump all the soil out and buy new soil? And he's like, honey, I'm the world's strongest man. I can just pick it up. If we put an athlete like Brian next to someone like LeBron, I mean, first of all, you, you'd notice how amazing it is that LeBron would suddenly look like a normal human being. I've stood next to LeBron James, he's a big dude, and to think about someone who's the same height and one and a half times his weight is pretty remarkable. It's great to see those monsters. I mean, each one of those guys that go on stage, uh, you know, the guy that weighs 300 pounds is considered the lightweight, right? And I mean, to me, I'm still looking up at this guy and I say, oh my God, this guy like makes me look like this little louse. But I mean, it's just amazing the power and how huge they are. I'm probably about 420, Five now, something like that. For a long time, I actually got in a uh, bad place with the scale because I was weighing myself too often. In my mind, I, I started associating being heavier with being stronger, and that's not necessarily the case. It's almost a, a reverse anorexia kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird, you know? I think people have called it bigorexia. The eating is the hardest part of that for me. And the reason for that is that it's constant. To be fair, it's just a lot of chewing and swallowing. I try my best when I'm traveling to compete to take food that I need. I'll, I'll have it with me or I'll have it shipped there to my hotel. Given the nature of your specific sport, everything boils down to two things that I have to focus on for Brian Shaw. And that's number one, fuel, and number two, strength. If you don't have the right fuel and you're under the right energy, it doesn't matter how strong we might have been able to make you through your training, it won't be there when you need to actually deliver on contest day. Hey, oh, Brian, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> well, that, that's not a very nice way to answer the phone, is it? Well, I thought it was very appropriate since you know very you like good friends and everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's fine then. How are you doing, you fat piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all good, bro. I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the baby is growing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. How big is it? It looks like a fucking two-year-old. It's gonna pop out as a toddler. Yeah. It says zero to three months, so maybe he could wear it for like a day. This is a three month foot. I'd be very proud of him, even if I bought these. If they didn't fit? If they didn't fit, I'd be very proud. A baby is something we both have wanted for a very long time, and we're very excited about it, but like every family, a child changes something. Like other families, we're gonna lose sleep and you know, I think our schedules are gonna get thrown off. His lifting, his eating, his therapy, um, that is his career. Where a lot of people going to the gym is what they do for fun, they do it after work. Um, but they can't skip out on work. 
And so for Brian and I, he can't skip out on the gym because that is his job. He can't skip out on eating because that is his job. Probably my only role model to sort of copy in the strongman world would be, would be Brian Shaw. Yeah, I've never seen such a professional athlete in all my life. I've never seen someone be so dedicated and, 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 and straight-laced on everything he does. There's no nights off from Brian, you know, he won't sway off from training or, or his recovery side of things. That's commendable, you know, there's not many guys that can do that in the world. I don't like to lose at anything, at anything. It, I mean, your board games are, I mean, you tell, just name it, and I just absolutely just despise it. I, I can't deal with it. And that's just how I've been since I was a kid. When you're trying to be the strongest man on the planet, and I've been blessed to be one of those guys, I know how much work goes into it. Like, you cease to almost have a life. To be able to be that guy should fuel you. And I think that uh, you'll see in every competitor in, in the Arnold Classic uh, that fuel and that drive to be number one. Lithuania was occupied by Soviet Union. I was 15 years old. Occupied is mean that you must learn occupant language in school. It means that you can't go through the border. You must stay always in, uh, in your area. Everything was gray. Buildings was gray. Everything was gray. No colors, nothing. It's very sad life. You live like in big prison. Gyms, bodybuilding, and strongman sport was not allowed. I always dream about life in, in, in free country. We all grow up in a certain way. I grew up very poor because I was born after the Second World War. We had famine and starvation, and we had misery, and we were just beaten by the Allied forces, you know, and Austria was like, uh, you know, crushed by Russia and all of this kind of thing. So uh, it was a terrible time to grow up. But when I went in the gym working out, all of a sudden it didn't matter anymore how much money you had, from what kind of a background you came from. Are you coming from a royal background or do you come from a rich background or do you come from a privileged background? Nothing mattered. The 150 pound on the, on the barbell was as heavy for the rich kid than for me. years where we got independence. Strongman sport came that time. It was part of freedom. And I started strongman sport when we got independence. And now we are living in a nice country with happy people, with nice nature, colorful buildings. I see him as a very bright man. He owns a series of, I don't know, four or five gyms and he owns quite a bit of real estate. To be the strongest man, enough to lift weight two, three hours per day. But we have 24 hours. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to do something more. I am politician also. I visited over 80 countries and I got a lot of ideas what we can do better in Lithuania. I was elected for uh, Vilnius City Council for four years. I am planning to participate in a parliament election. I felt like I had an equal starting point here. And so this is why I went in the direction of sport because I felt like, okay, here I have an opportunity. And then later on, I can go and educate myself. And that's exactly what I did. I went and I crushed them all. And I trained and trained and trained five, six hours a day. With 19, I became second Mr. Universe. With 20, I became the youngest Mr. Universe. And then with 21, the second time Mr. Universe, and they went winning, 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 winning. And then I came to America with this success. And here I was celebrated. Here I could make all of a sudden a living from all of that. But it, gave the, it was the sport that gave me the opportunity that opened up the doors. And that is really what we want to celebrate. Arnold Schwarzenegger was my inspiration. I started training by Arnold Schwarzenegger training programs. Most important victory in my all strongman career is first time Arnold Classic champion title. 
It was 2003, and my dream was compete in Arnold Classic and meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just extraordinary to see all those monsters. Hey, congratulations. That was really extraordinary. Fantastic. Record-breaking. Really good. Good, yeah. I'd say I must win today. <laughs> and I won that competition. It was a big, big thing for me. And then I believe that I can be really strong and can be strongest. Powerlifting, weightlifting, bodybuilding, and all of those sports makes you feel equal. We are in Vingio Parkas. This is a very special place for Lithuanian strongmen. It was one of the first big competitions in Lithuania. It was Lithuanian strongest man. I saw that competition on TV and I decided I want to be a strong man as well. And I train now under the seats for this year <laughs> Arnold Classic. This is very good energy in this place and I feel Lithuanian power. I train alone because it's harder. When we coming to stage and it's thousand people, they give you a lot of energy and weights are lighter and you can lift more. Where I train, it's harder, it's colder, and I think uh, it must be in training harder than in competition. There's a huge advantage to doing this in a sustained way over a long period of time because what you're ultimately doing is completely rebuilding your physiology. And that takes time to do because you can only do it a little bit at a time. I feel very young. When I start strongman sport, I was 16 years old. I was a child. I feel almost same like I now 40. He might look like the same guy on the outside, but inside, he's a completely different machine than he was when he started this and even than he was five years ago. It's only one way to get stronger, to, to get more muscle. There's also a term you might hear sometimes called old man strength. There is no shortcut to it. No 18-year-old is coming up behind you. They can't be. I like to train. I like to compete. I want to win. And nothing changes, just by getting stronger and stronger and have more experience. You know, this is what it is all about. Is, is that you find something that makes you, that elevates you, that makes you feel special. And that's what weightlifting and powerlifting and sports in general do. And this is what powerlifting is also about. They come from poor countries, those guys. They come from miserable backgrounds. But then when they lift, they feel good. I am strongest because I work hardest, I train hardest, and uh, I'm born to be strong. You can lift and make lifts other places, and people will respect those lifts. But if you won it at the Arnold, that means that you got tempered by the hottest fire. There's not one strong man. They line their ass off if they tell you, oh, that's, I didn't make it, it's okay. I, I'll go to so-and-so competition. It, it's not. The Arnold is it. The Super Bowl, the NBA championship, the Olympics of strongman lifting. How's everyone doing? Four men over 400 pounds competing in this year's Arnold Strongman Classic, the 15th year. Now, guys, what's going on here? Over the whole weekend, all the events will be added together. 10 points for the winner of each event, 10 men in the event, and so on and so forth. Now, just for fun, what are we at at the moment here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plates. Seven aside, 14 plates. That's coming in around 700 pounds. 700 pounds is gonna be the starter. All of our lifters surely could take that kind of weight off the ground. It's just a matter of strategy. They only get three lifts. As your camera's out, folks, here we go. The way the contest works is you call your opening weight, then you call your second weight, and you call your third weight. 
So you can only ever go up. It's like you're bidding at a silent auction or something. The deadlift is very much like a game of chess. You have to make the right moves at the right times. And then at the end of all that, you have to be strong enough to back those moves up. I'm afraid not to put your hands together, folks. Kaz, put your money down, brother. Who's going to win? Well, Eddie Hall's pulled the heaviest weight off the ground in the last six months and year. Boom! Come on, Dimitar! Well, well, well. That's a no lift. It's really wonderful to see those guys lifting 800 pounds. Then they go, we'll go to 900 pounds. We're dealing here with monsters. Thank you. Get to the chopper! Mr. Drunas, get to the board, baby! This year for the Drunas of Iskas! 40 years old this year, seven times the Arnold champion. Up it goes. A little bit tentative, I have to say. So Drunas, he's maybe not firing on all cylinders. He did have some back problems last year. When guys are dealing with this amount of weight, any little mistake not only will inhibit their ability to move the weight, but might rip their tendons and ligaments right off of their bones. Come on, Zadrunas! So as you said, he pulled that tentative, and then all he had in it. If you're a big Z fan, don't panic. Getting close to the mythical thousand. If I was going to describe the deadlift for somebody that's never lifted before, I would say it's a raw testament of your will, not just your strength. Oh, yeah! Uh, yeah! Come on! Come on! Have Thor Julius Bjorsen! Boom! Are you kidding me? The mountain gives you a moment of an effort. Who really gets in the situation where in one moment to the next, Everything they've ever worked for, you're going to see if it's success or failure, black and white, right now. And where's the beast? Yes, we are still waiting for Eddie Hall to join this contest. It's going to be very interesting out of the gate to see what Ed does. I'm really curious to see what his weight choices are. Eddie Hall, he's coming in at over a thousand pounds for his opener. Are you kidding me? And there's only three men in the history over a thousand pounds. That's a huge gamble for Eddie Hall. The tendency is that you just want to write down a bigger number than everybody else has. If you get a little overzealous and you call too much and you fail, you're done. And there's a reason there's only been three guys that have done 1,000 pounds because it's hard to do. He is the reigning Arnold champion. He won the Arnold Australia. He won the Arnold Brazil. He won the Arnold Columbus. He won the world's strongest man all in one year last year. Is Brian Shaw gonna put on a show to enter a very exclusive club to become the fourth man in history to pull a thousand pounds? Come on! How about that? Brian Shaw, well within his range. When you think of Brian Shaw, obviously you see him as number one in the world. I'm the hungry wolf at the bottom of the hill, climbing the hill, and I want to knock him off. 1,026 pounds to take it all. And that is Mr. Eddie Hall. One of the greatest Olympians in British history was Mark Foster. When Eddie Hall was 14 years old, he destroyed Mark Foster's swimming records in Britain. And then he decided to give up. A few years later, a little lost in life, he found weightlifting, and here he is now, folks, for our pleasure, for his pleasure. Do you want to see the greatest lift ever in human history off the floor? I want everyone here right now to think about what Eddie Hall's going to go for. I want you to channel your energy. I just heard someone saying that you ain't gonna do it, Eddie. Are you gonna do it? Come on, Eddie! The power is within the beast. Bring it out. 1,000. 
26 pounds for the win. Yes! Come on, Eddie! Come on, Eddie! Up, 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 up. Schwarzenegger effect. You did it again. Every single time as EO, you break a world record. How do you do it? Oh, I don't share records. That record's mine. That's how I do it. I want it. Fantastic. Let's give him a big hand. The world record holder with a deadlift of all. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie the Beast. Oh! Such a phenomenal performance. I hope you people realize you have seen history today on the Arnold stage. Saying this, Brian, Brian Shaw gave me one of his peanut butter and honey sandwiches. Now that, that's fucking love, that is, man. That's love. I won't give him mine. Now then, we have the Austrian oak to come. Hi, babe. Hi, you right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've just done the deadlift and I've just won. We've uh, did 1,023 pounds, I think. So I won. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, thanks, babe. Are you okay? What are you up to? Oh, in bed. All right. Well, listen, you get back to sleep. I love you. Just, I just thought I'd let you know why it's, why it's fresh. I know you like to know the first thing. Okay, babe. Speak to you tomorrow. I love you. Love you. Bye. Now, Bill, we have the Austrian Oak about to start. This is the big boy. Tell us a bit about it. 451 pounds. It has to be taken through the legs, across the chest, to the shoulders, and locked out. Now, last year, there was a lot of men who came out who were surprised. They did not lift this. It's only been done a couple times in the history of the Arnold Strongman Championship. So, Without further ado, I believe we're ready. Guys, are you ready? trying to convince himself. He's trying to focus. He's trying to fire himself up to be able to go and make that lift. And it's just hard. And, you know, I'm not saying that he's mentally uh, unprepared. It's a lot easier when you know this is what I was meant for. This is my lift. Is the world ready for Hapthor Bjornsson? Mountain in Game of Thrones, but hey, he's the real deal. Two times Europe's strongest man. He's been second a world's strongest man. And 
former basketball player for Iceland before damaging his knee. So he took up the safe sport of strongman. Here we go. Come on, have four. I can tell you something, Bill. Icelandic record is 200 kilograms, and he owns that. So this is this is 10 pounds. 440 is the Icelandic record, Bill. Oh, with his height at almost six feet ten, that logs him literally in the sky in the stratosphere. It's an extreme disadvantage for a man his height to lift this kind of weight overhead. But the mountain has it within his mind to get it done. Come on. Thirty seconds. No, he's finished there. Ladies and gentlemen, please prepare for arguably the strongest man in history, the Lithuanian sensation, Zadrunas. The Big Z. Big Z, though, he had a little problem yesterday. He could quite possibly be the best ever, but really, maybe age is catching him or a couple of injuries because he struggled a little bit in the deadlift yesterday. The time has begun. Here we go. We've got one, Bill. Tell you what, that right there could be the winner. No one else last year could do it. Well, with someone like Eddie Hall on form, he's got to do a couple, I think. Especially in the oak, where you know when he walks toward the bar that it's already lifted. Yes! So, Druna Zabiscus. What a master of strength. And in typical Zadruna style, he celebrated with a, just a heavy sigh. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. For the man from Stoke-on-Trent in England. He is the beast. He is the British record holder in log. The world record holder in the deadlift. Eddie the Beast Hall. Toyo, a little bit of balance problem there. In you go, fellas. Make sure he's all right. All right, sometimes it happens, you just get a little faint. Things shut off, turn off. A little oxygen deficit. Put your hands together, folks. Eddie's just, lights went out for a moment there. Pull down the back here on the elbow. It's an old injury, it's just fucking flat. I've just torn it again, I know I have. I heard, it, I heard it go pang. I know you've claimed him as your son a few times, but uh, Eddie Hall is he's having to withdraw. Did you ever have an oh shit moment? That's what I'm having right now. Fuck! Fucking. Let's have a word, Mr. Drunas, the winner of the log. 
And he's quite quiet. You are seven times Arnold champion, four times world's strongest man. Yesterday, the deadlift was a little down. Do you feel you can still win today? Win the whole contest, even after losing so many points in the deadlift? I, I will always say that Zadrunas is the strongest guy that ever walked the planet because just the things that I've, I've found to be uh, difficult, he made look easy. And um, I was no chump. You're still in first. Three-way tie at 15, I think. You're still in first. You'll smash the dumbbell. Dumbbell, you're great. Extremis back is four. So, Peyton and Yo. Yo, go. I think. This. Yeah. Wow. the filming. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> slagging everyone off. I'm like, that camera's there. Yeah. Oh, that Eddie Hall's an asshole. <laughs> what, are you, what are you at? I'm 400. Are you? Yeah. Man. 399 I am. Whew. Man. That's heavy, man. Yeah, I fucking feel it as well. Yeah. Must admit, it is quite around this region. <laughs> <laughs> How much weight do you put on? So you put fucking five pounds on the fucking fat roll on the back of your neck. <laughs> 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 Looks like you fucking somebody stuck a sesame bun on the back of your head. Feeling all right. Yeah, I'm a, this tricep's not gonna happen, mate. In terms of like a dumbbell and stuff like anything where you've got a balance, like a log or a dumbbell, fucking impossible, it just hurts like fuck. Oh. No, it's training going well though, you, 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 did you do that dumbbell? Have you done the big one? Yeah. You, you got how many reps? Have you just done one? Yeah, just, no, well, I don't know how many I'll get here. Putting the average obese American above your yeah. head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 300 pounds, yeah. Three hundred pounds in one hand. Balance is key. Hey, who, who is lifting it next? No, no, this is too much for me. Come on, now. don't torture me. I, I want to do a snapshot. So I just want to need. I need someone to lift it. I've seen some training vids. I know you can do this kind of weight. This is going to be one of the closest Arnold's. Guys are going to be one, two points apart rather than like Zadrunas rolling people by 10 points. It's not going to be that. Come on, Hap Thor. I was close. Very few men can do this and no boys. Come on. Yes, come on. The big Z getting wrapped up. Powerlifting champion. World's strongest man four times. Arnold champion seven times to do the Sabiscus. You can tell just by looking at people if they're ready or not. I think Brian Shaw is on form. You know, I, I, I can't see anyone beating Brian at this competition. You know what, man? If, if I was a betting man, I would always bet Zadrunas. I think he's the strongest man that ever lived. Between Brian Shaw and Zabiscus, they have battled it out at the Arnolds and World's Strongest Man for the last six, seven years. It's this epic battle clash between us and we're neck and neck and it's it's you know it's this half point it's one point it's you know does he slip up just a little bit do i slip up a little bit zadrunas zaviscus the great strength athlete from lithuania begins here we go the big z didn't quite lock it out he gave Magnus Bear the eyes there, and I tell you what, a weaker referee would have given that one. I've tried to analyze him from every which way, and sometimes I think he doesn't look as good, sometimes I think this or that, but he ends up doing something crazy. So Junus knows if he gets one rep here, it gives him massive points advantage. We've got one, Phil. Zadrunas Zabiscus. Good job, big guy. This contest, Brian is biggest competitor because this year we are very close. I must look what he do, but still I look in what I do, and if I be better than me, I will be winning. The big show. Well, if there was one man who was more cerebral, than others in strength is Brian Shaw. I mean, he's a very, very intelligent man. He thinks through every lift.
The rest of the world are in big trouble here, baby. That was awesome. Come on, Brian. Come on, Brian, let's go. Come on. One rep, no problem. You know what you can do, get behind him. Let's see the second, Brian, come on. Lovely, number two. Colin, in my life, I've never seen such tremendous power as Brian Shaw has just displayed two times in a row with a 300-pound dumbbell. Come on, Brian. Bring it. Right now. This one to put him into the lead. For the USA. Right there. Brian Shaw, we know, has the win in this sheer dumbbell. So at the moment, uh, Brian Shaw in the lead, 25 points, Bill. Two points ahead of Zadruna Sabiscus, so it's tied at the top. The final couple of events, how could it pan out? What are the events like for you? There's a lot on the line right now, a lot of pressure, and anything can still happen. If I do what I've done in training, I'll, I should perform pretty well. Once again, you're exhorting. Let's see for the champion, the Sear Dumbbell, Brian Shaw. Thank, thank you guys for your support. You're awesome. If he wins, I think he's going to be super excited. But to be fair, he expects himself to win. So it'll kind of be, this is what I expected. If he loses, he'll be furious with himself because he knows it's in his hands. And he'll, he'll flat out tell anyone that asks, I can only blame myself. Well, this is uh, certainly a true test of strength. I'd say the one man who always does, does well at this is Zadrunas. That raw power of Zaviskis. And we have to keep in mind, you watch our strongman staff move this weight. It takes six men to move this apparatus around on the stage. That gives you a good idea as just how heavy this apparatus is. Seven hundred kgs, thirteen feet, one thousand five hundred and forty pounds. Bill. All right, Timitar Savatinov strapped up. Ready to go. Looks like he's going for a slightly lower pickup. Come on, Jimitar. Got to get it going. 18 seconds to go. Just over 10 seconds. Come on. Keep it moving. Solid form for him. Just lunging forward, trying to pick up some court. The last seconds, come on! The Devatar went halfway down the course. Let's see if our next competitor can go the whole distance. 13 feet. The whistle has been given. We're underway here. Two meters, five centimeters tall, six foot nine. No, oh, maybe not at the end of this. Oh, that was... A lunge there from Bjornsson. He's got it. You move it again. Come on, Hapthor. Ten seconds. That was superb from the mighty Thor. What a recovery. You know, it takes it takes a special somebody to go into a special zone to make this happen. I remember you once saying about Brian Shaw, I thought it was a great line. The evolution of the sport. A six foot eight man who moves like a true athlete, who has the power of the, the greatest, most world-class power lifter. You know, it's the whole package. Brian Shaw in the lead, 25 points. Two points ahead of Zadruna Sabiscus. Big Z is the poster boy for the power belly. Who wants abs when you can have a power belly, Kaz? That's what I say. Hey, how many titles does he have? Everybody in the world wants to be like Z, you know that. He's won everything, many, many times. Arnold champion seven times, Zadunas Zaviskas!
I can put a ton of pressure on him and typically, typically he'll step up and he can do the same to me and typically I'll step up. Between Brian Shaw and Zaviskas, they have battled it out for the last six, seven years. He looks comfortable, this is impressive. Just rock forward there a little bit. Got to pick and go one more time. Come on, Zadrunas. Yes. Just rock forward a little, Kaz. He was looking good. Great power. He was so comfortable. Zadrunas is a heck of a competitor, and he's been at the top of now what would be a couple different eras. He dominated dominated the Arnold after it started. You know, 2000, basically 2003, four, five, he was just winning and nobody could have stepped up to, to touch him at all. Right here, the chance for Brian Shaw to lay down the law to the rest of the competitors to take the advantage. This is two points currently and extend that going into the fifth event. Let's hear it. Brian Shaw from the USA. Come on, Brian. Come on, Brian, you got this. Let's go, come on. Come on, Brian, let's go, come on. We are underway. So far, so good. Brian Shaw destroys the male tote. No problem. Little morning walk with the dog. Nice, smooth footwork. Really rock solid. A lot of the sports we most value in the United States, we are used to the best teams getting beat a lot, right? So there's the any given Sunday or there's in baseball, you know, the always next year, even you think, well, the best team actually loses a lot of the years. This is something where it's so cut and dry. If a guy fails, it's because he was bested in the most direct way and there can only be one guy at the top. When I come to competition, I know exactly what I must do to be a winner. And after deadlift, I was so happy because I was healthy for next events. Two and a half weeks ago, and I go to gym and try to lift very heavy deadlift and I injure my muscle. I come to Columbus or no, but then I go to doctor and they find that it's serious injury, but not so big. And I can do all events, but I can do deadlift, <laughs> but I still, say that I need to do something in deadlift. And my plan was to be fifth in deadlift or, or sixth. Uh, I, I got sixth place. And uh, most important thing that I was not injured again. Between and Brian, it's three points. Some guys think, oh my God, uh, I, I will lose this competition. But in my heart, I believe that in the end, I will be winner. We're both very strong mentally. We both don't typically make very many mistakes, if any mistakes at all. And we both can step up in a big moment and perform. And that's, that's what makes us so competitive with each other. I think he maybe is a little more relaxed than last year. I can't remember the points from last year, but um, he has a decent lead. Leading three points going into the last event frame carry it's a big lead. It's like leading uh, 10 points in a basketball game, one minute left. The other team has to make a lot of mistakes. Brian is, is also very good in frame carry. This is an event that has been done at the Arnold Classic here since the very first year. The man who actually started this strongman event here, and I'm going to grab him before he runs away, is Dr. Terry Todd. Terry, as they're just sorting things out here, what would you say this test more than anything else, this final event of the Arnold Classic? It tests overall body strength. You have to sustain 500 kilos, about 1,100 pounds, and you've got to walk up the ramp, holding it in your hands. 
Get your stopwatches out, folks. Now, he knows what he's got to do. You can't imagine how much is on the line here for these guys. The glory, the money, and it is a very significant amount of money. It's the biggest prize in all of Strongman. He is the reigning Arnold champion. We're on the way. He's got the rhythm now. Come on, Brian. Time was 18.62 seconds. Only one way to win, not just beat Brian, but be number one in that event and hope that uh, more guys beat, uh, beat Brian. It's not impossible, but it's verging on the impossible. You need at least three men, probably four men, to beat Brian and Zadrunas has to win. Just three guys who can beat him. Kaptor. He's moving. It's going. Come on, Abthor. All the way. You can do it. Yes! Yes! Without us. Come on, without us. Keep it going. Keep it going, Vito. Come on. All the way. And Matthias. Don't drop it. Keep it going. Keep it going. Yes. Just the big Z to come. His body's been through torture. Do you know what, Bill? And it's very important to say this. There's three points between Zadunas and Brian Shaw, who leads the contest. This is the final event. Zadunas, he has every opportunity of making it an eighth title. If he goes 14 seconds or below, he knows that explicitly. At this moment, plain and simple, this is Shaw's world, unless the Vickers wants to take it back. If there's one man who can do it, it's the man who's won seven Arnold titles. One man left to take it all. Some say he's the strongest man in history. We are underway. So far, so good. Fiskers! Ladies and gentlemen, the time, 13 seconds dead. It's the Drunas. Congratulations. How does it feel winning? Thank you. Uh, it feels great. I won uh, a time. It was a uh, hard way to, to this contest. Well, you did a great job running up that ramp, I tell you that. Uh, I love that event uh, because first time when I won Arnold Classic 2003, I did the uh, same event. Well, congratulations, congratulations. Fantastic, let's give him a big hand to all of them. Fantastic job, congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Watching Brian, you know, I could just tell he was confident, you know, he thought, he, you know, I could tell he thought he had this in the bag. And watching on was quite hard to watch because he just, he, all he had to do was come like the top four and he'd have won. That, this is Brian's life. To not win something like this when you've trained a whole year for it is pretty, pretty harsh. So Drew just hung around and, and I knew it would be, he'd be consistent enough to stay right there. And I made, you know, in, in my mind, I mean, there's definitely other things I could have done. I'm just gonna go home, train harder, and, and do my best in, in my next competition. I was a little bit scary, but I still uh, believe in my heart that I, I, I will win. And uh, it's happened, and I won. 
uh, you must fight until the end and al also always believe yourself. I do it for uh, my country, for my friends, for my family. If your goal just that you want to be a champion, maybe you win one, two times, but you not will be 10 times champion. It needs to be something more. When they come to the Arnold Classic, they feel like they're being celebrated. You're somebody, you're special. I think it's one of the joys of my year is always to go to the Arnold Classic and to meet all those different athletes, but specifically those world's strongest men. It's a brotherhood, you know, like we, we, we modern day gladiators that actually uh, hope that the other person does more than we did just so we can see somebody do something amazing. Why do we do these things? Why do we lift weights? It's, it's human nature. It's who's the alpha male? You know, who can pick the most weight up from the floor? Who is the strongest? And that's, that's, that's history and, that, and, it'll, and it'll be a big part of history for thousands and millions of years to come, I'm sure. Uh, and that's why we do it, you know? It's, it's to find out who is the alpha male.